In this video we look at acceleration transformations. We've already seen that two observers in different reference frames may not agree on position, on velocity, and also they may not agree on acceleration. So when you're taking measurements and comparing one observer's measurements to another, you need transformation equations. The acceleration transformation equation looks exactly like what the velocity and the position transformation equation did. The acceleration of an object seen in the unprimed observer's frame looks like the acceleration of the object in the primed frame plus the acceleration of the primed observer as measured by the unprimed observer. Exactly the same sort of thing that we saw previously. I'll uh, now do the proof, but you may want to skip this if you've already seen previously. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the velocity transformation, which we had previously. Remember, this was done previously. And also remember that that was derived by the assumption that the time measured in both frames of reference were the same, something that we know is true only at low speeds. So given that, the change in velocity as measured by the unprimed observer is equal to the change in the velocity, for instance, of an object I could say a baseball by the primed person plus the change in the velocity of the primed observer as measured by the unprimed. Remember in our previous thing this was the baseball as measured by the batter, this was the baseball as measured by Ryan, and this was Ryan as measured by the batter. We now divide by delta t and take the limit. So the limit as delta t goes to zero of delta v over delta t is equal to the limit of delta t goes to zero of delta v prime over delta t plus the limit as delta t goes to zero of the change in capital V over the change in time. Now because of our statement that both observers measure the same time I can go back although I've done this just divided both sides by the same delta t and take the same limit I can change this term to where that's delta t prime right there and right there. So what does this say? This is the change in the velocity of the ball, whatever the object is, say a baseball, over the change in time measured by one observer, the unprimed observer, as delta t goes zero. This one says the change in the ball's velocity is measured by the prime observer over the change in time measured by the prime observer and this says the change in the velocity of the primed observer as measured by the unprimed person over the change in time. Everything here is measured by the unprimed person. Both quantities here by the prime person. Both quantities there by the unprimed. So this is the definition of acceleration and it's unprimed because everything was measured by the unprimed observer. Here, this is acceleration of the object, but everything was measured by the primed observer, so I guess a prime. This capital V means that it's the other observer, the primed observer, whose velocity we were measuring the change, and it was measured by the unprimed person. You see there's no prime, so we're going to use capital A, the indication the relative acceleration of the two observers. If the two observers are moving at constant speed in a straight line with respect to each other, then neither of them measures the others accelerating in capital A is zero and they will agree on A and A prime. This is important because in a later chapter we're going to find out 
that when you multiply acceleration times the mass of an object, you find the net external force that's been applied to it. So they will agree on forces. However, if they're accelerating with respect to each other, they do not agree on, on the forces that are involved. And this is going to lead to some very interesting things in Chapter 4 and 5. So that's our proof of the transformation equation. And let's give you an example of a problem that you might be given. Observer number one is riding in a car. So here's a car. And we'll call that one the primed observer. And if you wonder how I know which one's prime and which one's not prime, I don't. You can choose either one. Uh, but you have to make a choice and be consistent after that. Uh, this person is seen by another observer. So here they are. That's going to be my unprimed observer. And they see this car accelerating at 10 meters per second squared. How do I know that? Right there. In the x direction. Always be on the lookout for numbers. Be on the lookout for important terms. Accelerating. I don't know anything about riding is in a car, but that's a physics term. There's an amount. It's this amount. So it's an A. It's got a units of an acceleration. This gives me a direction. 10 meters per second squared I hat. Who sees this person? Well, that's an observer. It's seen by this person. This is the person making the measurement. So it's a capital A to indicate an observer. So that's the other observer. This is the person doing the measurement. They don't have any primes, so there's no primes on that A. Now let's see what else we see. It says observer 2. Remember that's my unprimed observer. Sees a plane. Alright, here's a plane. The plane is accelerating at 20 meters per second squared in the x direction. So that's an object. That's a little a. It's measured by the unprimed person, so it gets no prime. 20 meters per second squared I hat. Something to note. It doesn't say the plane is flying this away. It says it's accelerating that away. So if it's going in this direction, it's picking up speed. The plane could be going in that direction, but be slowing down. The plane may be going up, but it's actually going to be making a curve because this is acceleration and velocity are not the same thing. It asks me, what is the plane's acceleration as measured by observer 1? So you want to know what A prime is. Let's write our formula. There's A is A prime plus capital A. I want to find this, so I need to isolate that term. A prime is the acceleration is measured by the unprimed observer minus the acceleration of the car as seen by the unprimed observer. So we have 20 meters per second squared I hat minus 10 meters per second squared I hat. So the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared I hat. And that's how you do that type of problem. Okay, we're done with this section.